I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Oath of Enlistment, a pledge to serve our country. This is the best country in the world. It is. I owe pretty much everything to the uh, uniform service of this country. This gave me a future. So I'm very proud to put this uniform on. But the number of people signing up to put this uniform on and take this oath, so help me God, is dwindling. Would you consider it a problem recruiting? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Numbers are way down. Joseph 20 Grit Contino is the commander of the 914th Air Refueling Wing here in Niagara Falls. Over his 38 years of service, things have changed. Back in the 80s and 90s, you wore this around, people instantly knew what you did. Um, you wouldn't believe the questions I get on what this uniform, they don't even know it's a uniform. Uh, I've had people think I'm a car mechanic. He points to five reasons why numbers are down. One, it's not in pop culture like it used to be. Think G.I. Joe, the A-Team. Two, they aren't as visible anymore with fewer bases nationwide. Compared to 25, 30 years ago, we're about 25% of what we used to be. Three, they haven't had as many air shows, but there is one on the way. Four, Commander Contino doesn't have as much manpower to recruit. And five, societal issues. I don't think it's foreign on anybody that we're a little softer now than we used to be. People are uh, far less likely to even think about the military as an option after high school graduation. According to a Department of Defense study, only 9% of civilians between ages 16 and 24 are planning to join, the lowest number in 15 years. The biggest struggle that we have is is a desire to serve. It's, it's strange. It's Master Sergeant Jason Karate's job to recruit, something he's been doing since 2015. When I first started, it was pretty easy, we'll say. A lot more interest, uh, generation changes. Brand awareness is a big thing. We need to get more out there. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't even know that there's an air reserve station here. So they're working on it, being more present in the community, posting on social media, trying to hit the recruitment numbers for the year. We didn't meet last year, and we haven't met it since COVID. Our main goal is uh, 68 and we're sitting at 35. That's pretty low. Is there anything about those 35, though, that kind of keeps your faith alive? Yes, they're special airmen. They really are. Including Katie Jackson. It's definitely a feeling of pride. But her journey had its obstacles. I had a lot of medical waivers for really small things. Acne was one of them. And another one was I had LASIK. And I got LASIK because I couldn't join the military with how bad my eyes were, but then I got LASIK and they still said no. Plus the external pressures. And social media deters a lot of people because they're so negative. I hope the younger generation will, will see what's going on and want to step up. But you don't have to travel far for a recruiting success story. It's been fun. We've uh, been pretty successful this year so far. Ken Chidoba recruits for the 107th Attack Wing, where they brought in 95 recruits. It used to be the phone would always ring, you pick up and you know you get the person in, but now you know recruiters have to, have to actively go out and, and search. And here's why people are signing on. One of the main reasons has been our coverage for 100% SUNY tuition since we work for the state of New York. You get access to low-cost health care. They could get a bonus of $50,000, which is just life-changing. But they want people whose main goal is to serve. And really helping out uh, our neighbors within the community, which is one of the most rewarding parts about being in the 107th attack wing. They're active overseas, flying this MQ-9 remotely, but as members of the New York Air National Guard, they serve here in our own backyard. Commander Andrew Carlson tells me his team responded during the 2022 blizzard. We have one member that uh, delivered a baby in, in, in one of our uh, vehicles, which uh, we're, we're really uh, proud of. I actually volunteered to do the storm two years ago. I was doing overnights to make sure that the supplies were good, to make sure that the Army and the uh, Air Force were ready in the morning. Staff Sergeant Richard Berrios is in the medical group. He got started here three years ago. It helps me like know that I, I belong somewhere and I'm, I'm, I'm a part of something greater than myself. Now my kids look up to me like they call me Captain America. And for the next generation? What I hope for them is that they realize that the military is always going to be around and, and we're always going to need people to come and fight the good fight. And if the recruitment numbers don't start to take off... There's a D word that's floating around and that is instituting a draft. And I know people don't want to hear that and I don't want that to happen either because a volunteer service is far better 
than a conscripted service. But it's the Richards and the Katies and the dozens of other airmen stepping up that keep them hopeful. They make a big choice in that commitment to their country. That to me shows there is that light at the end of the tunnel, that there is still people that want to serve the greatest nation in the world. Taylor Epps, 7 News, Niagara Falls.